Welcome, 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 welcome to viewers online, live audience. Welcome to Plug Them. I'm, I'm so excited today. I'm excited for the topic that we're going to deal with. It's called, Are You Ready? Hallelujah. Are you ready? So let's get plugged in. Come on in with me. Hello, 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 and come, uh, welcome back to Plugged In. I'm excited. This uh, topic today is an interesting one. Um, are you ready is the question. And every young man and every young woman always has this question, saying that they are ready to get married. And it's a good thing. So we're going to talk about it today, uh, get in depth into it a little bit. Uh, Proverbs 18.22 says, He who finds a true wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from God. It says, He who finds a true wife, not a woman. So there's a qualification about who the man is looking for. And the question we would have for the woman is, are you ready to be called a wife? Because we are not looking for a woman, we are looking for a wife. That is what a man has to do. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So, um, it says that when you find a wife, you find a good thing and you obtain favor from God. Other words for true are factual, veracious, honest, trustworthy, strong, constant, steady, faithful. All these things are what a man should look for in a woman. Now you say, wow, this is so difficult. How can I get a woman such as this? The scripture actually confirms that it is the man's responsibility to find and pursue that wife. What qualifies a woman as a wife? The woman has to be a virtuous and worthy wife, earnest and strong in character. It's a crowning joy to her husband but she who makes him ashamed is an, is the word of God says, calls her as rottenness in his bones. So if you are not wife material, your husband, even the bones of your husband begins to rot. Wow. That is serious. That is what Hebrews says. Hebrews 12 and 4. Now, every time we talk about this subject, there's always silence because it is a, a time to, to think and reflect. Uh, women want to get married, but the question is, are they ready? Can you be described as a virtuous woman, a capable, intelligent, virtuous woman? The word of God says, who is he who can find her? So the, 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 the burden is not only on the woman, but the burden is also on the man. The man has to do the work to find that kind of woman, the caliber of a woman. The word of God says she is for more precious than jewels and her value is above rubies or pearls. In other words, there's no price to a virtuous woman. But a woman has to work to make sure that you are in that place. When you're getting ready to get married, the Bible doesn't say that you are just a woman. But it says a man that is going to be looking will be looking for a wife. So you have to be prepared. Yeah. It doesn't say you are just a woman. It says that the man is going to be looking for a wife. You're going to be a helper. I'm reminded of the fact that in Genesis, God called the woman a helper. And in scripture, when you look across the board, the only time that God uses helper for a woman is that time. 
All other times, God is called our helper. So a woman's value is so precious, so much so that God equates the helping part of a woman to what he does. That is powerful. So a woman is a very, very powerful, a, a, a wife is a very, very powerful uh, uh, person. That's why the, the Bible takes time to describe her. But you see, the mistake that a lot of women do is they don't even realize their worth. So they don't get ready for that role. That role is not just something that you, you, you walk into. It's a role that you prepare yourself with. Yeah. Amen. It's a role that prepares you. The word of God says the heart of her husband will trust in her confidently and rely on her and believe in her securely so that he has no lack of honest gain or need of dishonest. The, the man should be able to trust the woman so much that he wouldn't have a need to even be dishonest. The role of a woman is to comfort, encourage, and it does him good all the days of her life, as long as there is life within her. That is the responsibility of a woman, to make sure that the husband is good, as long as she has life within her, to please the husband. So, so then you would ask yourself, how can a woman do that? What about the needs of a woman? The Bible says that the woman is like a merchant ship. A ship that loads itself with foodstuff. She brings a household food from a far country. She brings it in so that there's security in the house. She comforts, she encourages him, she does him good all the days of it. I mean, you see it on and on and on. And, you know, while the woman is thinking about that, I'm going to go to the man as well. But I want you to know how important a woman is to structure where the husband is supposed to be. It says that she will rise while it is still yet night. And and, and she gets food for her household. The food that the word of God is talking about is spiritual. She stands on behalf of her family, of her, her husband, and she begins to pray on behalf of the husband so that the husband will have stability. The husband will have strength. The husband will be fortified. It's her job to pray for the husband. That is one of the things about a woman who is a wife. Amen? Amen. <laughs> now, guess what? The word of God says that she even considers a new thing. She considers a new thing concerning the family. The word of God describes it as prudent. What is prudent? Acting with or showing care and taught for the future. Uh, in case you didn't know it, it's a woman who takes care of the future, who looks beyond the present and begins to sow that seed in the husband. That husband, guess what? We need to do this and do that. And do. It is your role as a woman to play that important role, to sow that seed in your husband. So while I'm talking to you, Think about how you need to prepare when you want to be a wife. She girds herself with strength spiritually, mentally, and physically. She is fit. Amen? Not only would she go to the gym to be fit physically, but she will also be spiritually fit, mentally fit. Because she has God-given tasks that she has to perform. So when you want to be a wife, think about these things. You have tasks that you have to perform. God-given tasks. Have you even thought about it? That is not just, oh, I'm going to have a romantic relationship with my husband and he's going to love me. 
But you're supposed to bring things into bear. You're supposed to do things that will empower your husband. Amen. Amen. I love, I love what uh, uh, this specific verse says. It says, she tastes and sees that her gain from work with and for God is good. You know what that means? It means that even beforehand, she knows that God's hand is upon her life. And she's tasted the goodness of God. And she sees that it is good. So that when the husband might be going through whatever, she becomes the backbone and stability of the husband that will tell the husband that it is well with you. It is well with you. I have got your back. Because she's tasted and she's seen that the Lord is good. She knows who she is. She's not a second class citizen that people think she would be. No. But she's a co-partner with the husband. Amen. Amen. The word of God says that there there might be uh, times where there might be snow, there might be cold. But the word of God says that she does not even fear the snow for the family for a household or for, for, and she doubly clothes the family, the, ha- the husband in scarlet, only the best. She gives the husband only the best. Hallelujah. She makes fine linen garments and, le- and, and leads others to buy them. In other words, she can, she's convincingly good. She can make sure that she supports the husband. This is a role of a woman, a role of a wife. Things that have to back you as a wife. <laughs> I'm excited. She's strong. She has dignity. Her clothing and even her position is strong and secure. This is somebody who knows who she is. A wife. She's secure. Her position is secure. She's not bodied. Because she knows that when she goes on her knees and she prays, when she goes on her knees and she prays, just like how she has a womb, she also has a womb for prayer. And she receives things in the supernatural, things that a man cannot even fathom. She would receive it. That's why the word of God says she can travail. She can bring to birth the even impossible things. Amen. Amen. That's why when a woman prays, something happens. The word of God says she opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom. She doesn't gossip. She's always teaching kindness. Her tongue is full of life, giving counsel and instruction. She looks well to how things go in a household. She makes sure that everything is in place so that the husband walks into peace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. The word of God says, many daughters have done nobly and well with the strength of character that is steadfast in goodness, but the wife exceeds them all. The wife exceeds whatever a woman generally has done. Charm and grace are deceitful and superficial and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, a woman who fears, worships, obeys, serves, and trusts him with one filled respect. The word of God says you shall be praised. I told you, the woman's role is as though God has placed her in a specific place as a help. In the book of Psalms, you can call and say, Lord, be my help. David called and said, the Lord is my help. So a man has to be able to say, my wife is my help. Because in Genesis, God created her as a helper. Isn't that powerful? God created the woman as a helper. And it's so powerful. Amen. Amen. I want you to think about this for a minute. 
while I go to the men. <laughs> the men are not off the hook. Number one, they are supposed to pursue that perfect woman. The woman that I've described. But the word of God says in Ephesians 5.33, however, each man among you, without exception, there is no excuse. It says you are to love your wife as your very own self with behavior worthy of respect and esteem. Hello, somebody. The man is supposed to reverence the, 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 the woman, respect the woman with so much esteem, always seeking the best for her with an attitude of loving kindness. Mm. With an attitude as though she can do no wrong. Ah, glory to God. And the wife also must see to it that he respects and delights in her husband. And she notices him and prefers him and treats him with loving concern, treasuring him, honoring him, and holding him dear. How many people know that when you do that to a man, oh, the man melts like butter. See, a lot of women think that uh, my man is strong, my man is not listening, my man is not this, but you are not treating him like butter. <laughs> when you treat him, that way he melts. He melts so that he, everything that you want, in fact, he will give you the world. Uh, I'm talking to some women and they say, uh, people are going to be so quiet and say, what are you talking about? But a woman can capture a man's heart. But the man has to respect the woman. The man has to protect the woman. The, the man has to make sure that while he's doing that, you know, there's one thing that happens when a man respects a woman. When you respect a woman so good, the word of God says even your prayer will be answered. So as a man, if you don't respect a woman, your prayer is hindered. It's deep, isn't it? Your prayer is hindered. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5.21 says, Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. In other words, if you want to be a man of God, you want to make sure that your prayer is not hindered. Just like how Christ taught us. He loved the church no matter what. Think about it. With all our mess, with all the things that we go through that are not even godly, with all the mistakes that we've made, Jesus Christ didn't just toss us out. He still makes sure that his love is unconditional. His love is unconditional. That is what a man has to do to the wife. Hallelujah. So in as much as a, a wife should be subject to their own husbands as a service to the Lord, the husbands also have to be the head that God has called them to be, to the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. Himself being the savior of the body, the man has to be a, a, a reflection of Jesus Christ, being the savior of the wife. Amen. Husbands have to love their wife, seek the highest good for for your wife and surround her with a, a, a caring that is unselfish, unselfish love, just as Christ has also loved the church and given up himself to her so that he might sanctify the church. Oh, somebody needs to make sure that your wife is sanctified. Amen. Your wife, when you look at your wife, you got to be so happy you got to make sure that your wife is so happy. You got to you got to make sure that your wife is in a good place. How do you make your wife be in a good place? 
You know how the Bible says that we should lean on him and not on our understanding. That is the same way that your wife should have the comfort and the ability that when she's even falling back without knowing what is behind her, she would know that you, you have her. Amen. 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 That is how a man has to be to the wife. That is how a man has to be to the wife. And it's so important. We always put the blame sometimes on women and say, oh, I have to find a wife and the wife has to be ready. But yes, as a man, what are you doing? What are you doing to make sure that when the woman is ready and she comes and you find her, that you also have things in place? Because when you find her and she comes, there are things that are expedient or expectant from you. Like I said, you have to love her unconditionally. So you found her, you found the wife, and she snores. <laughs> How are you going to deal with a snore? When you've lived all your life without somebody being next to you snoring. I want you to think about that for a minute. Oh, today we're having so much fun. But yeah, you had the wife that snores. And when you saw her, she had a weave on or she had a wig on. And so she's getting ready to go to sleep and she takes it off. <laughs> she takes it off. How are you going to deal with that? Because you've never seen that in your life. But you still need to be unconditional. And then you realize the next day that all that beauty that you saw in the nails are actually nails that can pop. <laughs> I told you we're going to have fun today. We're going to have fun today. It's going to be good. Amen. So the nails pop. So what you saw, you couldn't see no more. Oh, and you looked at her and she was radiant with eyelashes that you had never seen before. And then you realize that she woke up and the eyelashes are gone. And you're like, whoa, what is really going on? <laughs> you see how unconditional you have to be as a man? Not to mention once in a while they would wear a ghetto. And when they wear the ghetto, they have to wear it so it supports some things that you, you didn't know they had. And all of a sudden... You see them in the real. Uh, and you're like, what is going on? But it has to be unconditional. Amen. It has to be unconditional. Praise God. It has to be unconditional. It has to be beautiful. And you still have to call it beautiful. Not only calling it beautiful, but you have to cherish it. You have to cherish the woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to cherish the woman. That's why the Bible says there's something that is called a mystery of two becoming one. It is great. It is great. It is something that is amazing. Only God can bring that together. The word of God says, no matter what, without exception, you are to love your wife as though your wife is your own, your own self. You are to love your wife with behavior worthy of respect and esteem, always seeking the best for her, with one attitude of loving kindness, and the wife must see to it that she respects and delights in her husband, that she notices him and prefers him and treats him with loving consent, treasuring him, honoring him, and holding him dear. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Husbands, I'm going to hit on you again. Live with your wives in an understanding way. We great gentleness and tact 
Why do you need tact? Your husband will ask you sometimes, I mean, your wife will ask you sometimes, honey, how do I look? <laughs> and you have to be tactful, but you have to be loving. You have to be truthful, but you don't have to hurt her. So you see, we have a place to pray that is also very difficult. We have to do things in love. Just like once in a while we are chastised in the things of the spirit. As men, we can chastise but gently do it without hurting your wife. What am I saying? Sometimes your wife might be wrong. It doesn't mean you have to just give it to her. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. I told you you're wrong, you're wrong. No. You have to pamper your wife. You have to hold her in high esteem. And then you have to be suggestive, not vindictive. Honey, I thought maybe what you said might be okay, but I thought maybe we could do it a better way or you could handle it a different way. That is what a husband is called to do. Not to be judgmental, not to be always right. Because remember, the woman is your helper. The woman is the one that will make you succeed. Because remember what we read earlier, the woman sees what you don't see. She sees ahead of your future. You are always just looking for the immediate needs. But your, heart, your, your wife always deals with things like a merchant ship. What does that mean? Every time she looks, she has to know that there's something in the refrigerator that you don't even know about. She has to know that there's something in the bank account that you might have forgotten about. When you say you need something, trust me, the woman will pull something out of nowhere when you didn't even know that it was in your home. Because she's like a merchant ship. There are different cabins, there are different rooms, there are different storehouses. And she makes sure that every storehouse is stored for the rainy day. Remember what I read earlier on, what I showed you in scripture. It says that she's not even scared of the snow. She's not scared of the weather. Because she always has plans to make sure that she brings you to that expected place. Remember, she's help. What is help? Help is somebody who can take you from where you are and improve where you're going to stand. That is what a helper is. And your wife is a helper. So whenever she takes an issue or deals with an issue, she's going to bring you from a place where you can't handle it to a place where you have obtained what you want. That is how powerful a woman is in your life. So begin to think of a woman as the person that is going to take you. I mean, sometimes men, we are so boastful that we can say, you know what, I don't need anybody to take me where I want to be. But in reality, what you are saying is, you have reached the climax of where you are going to be. But if you bring the woman into your life, you will get to the place where it will pass your imagination. That is where and how powerful a woman is in your life. All she needs to do is to come into your life, show you what love looks like, and trigger that thing in you that... Uh, 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 elevates you to a different level. You can't experience that elevation if you don't have a wife. You can experience success, you can experience everything, but a woman comes as a helper. A woman will just suggest something in your life that will open doors to you, that will shock you, where you didn't even think about it, where you didn't even see a possibility. A woman the word of God calls the woman so powerful that she goes into the marketplace and then things around you will change because people will begin to praise you while she is in the marketplace. 
people will begin to talk about you while she is in the marketplace. While you are with the elders, your name will be known all over the place. That is how powerful a woman is. Amen. Amen. So you have to live with your wife with gentle, great gentleness and tact and with an intellect regard for marriage relationships. It has to be something that is powerful. You have to show your wife, show her honor and respect as a fellow heir, as somebody that is helping you, not somebody who you can use up, not somebody who you can scream at, not somebody who you think your voice should be louder than her. Amen. Amen. Show her honor, show her respect as a fellow heir of the grace of life. Think about it. Because of her, you would have earth. Because of her, you would have children. Because of her, generations will speak about you. Isn't that powerful? So you have to know how to treat a woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to know how to honor a woman. Show her the respect. Show her the respect. The word of God says you have to do it so much so that your prayer will not be hindered or ineffective. You have to do it so much so that when you stand before the Lord, you know without a shadow of a doubt that your prayer is answered. The beauty about it is that every time, just like the word of God describes your wife, that she'll be in the marketplace and you'll be recognized in places where you sit with elders. In the same vein, when you come before the presence of the Lord, you'll be recognized because she's praying on your behalf. Amen. Amen. You'll be recognized because your joint hair is lifting you up in prayer. A woman's role is so important. A man's role is also extra, extra important. So when you see yourself as I need a wife, see yourself as also I need to prepare to be the husband that God has called me to be. I need to be a representative just like Christ was a representative of the church. I need to be so representative that I shouldn't have any bias. I should take everything that I've heard in the world concerning what a husband must be and put it on the side and go back to the Constitution, the Word of God, and see who a husband would be while I'm pursuing that wife to also get ready to be the best husband that I can be. Amen. Amen. To be the best husband that I can be. And the wife, now you know that a wife has responsibilities. A wife has uh, character traits. A wife has to be somebody who is more precious than rubies. So every time you look at yourself as a wife, as a wife material, I told uh, one of the daughters of the house because we were talking and she said, I'm getting ready as a wife. And I said, that is wisdom. I told her, I said, one of these days I'm going to do uh, this subject and I'm going to remember what you just said, that you're getting ready to be a wife that is worthy. (laughs) So it happens that I'm doing it today, you know. But yes, when she said that, it was so profound. And I paused for a minute and I said, you know, this is full of wisdom. You have gotten the revelation that not only should I prepare myself, not only should I be ready, because if I don't do that, the man that is pursuing me or seeking me, if the man does not see the characteristics of a wife in my life, 
They are not going to come around me. Wow. That is how serious it is. Yeah. That is how serious it is. In the world, sometimes they will say that, oh, the wife always looks for somebody that looks like their father or somebody that behaves like their father. Because they've seen how a father behaves. They've seen how a father, for those of us who have had an experience with a father or a mother, but even if you've not had that experience, thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. You will experience how Jesus Christ loves you. So why would you want to go if you're a woman and you know how Jesus Christ loves you and takes care of you and you can go anyhow and say, Papa, this is me and this is what I'm looking for. This is my heart. And you know that the Father, Jesus Christ, he always reaches out and touches you and he's your help. The word of God says he's, he's, he's your help when you need him. Yes. And you see that experience and you've lived that experience. Why would you want to go somewhere where you're not going to experience the same thing? That's why people in the world, they even acknowledge that, you know what? My father, I have known as my source. So when I'm going for marriage, I have to see that person as my source. The world has made it so that they are like, oh, yes, even though you are co-equals, it means you have to split the bills with your wife or you have to split the bills with your husband. But you see, what that does in the world is it takes you out of your responsibility. It takes you out of your responsibility. The, the Lord created a man to have the responsibility of taking care of their family, their wife, and to be proud of it. But the world is saying, no, oh, because we are all workers, we are all going to split everything together. And that is wrong. Yes, you can have agreements and everything, but don't take away the fact that you are supposed to be a provider. That is what has hindered and destroyed a lot of marriages. Because a woman comes and says, I'm every woman. But while you are saying you are every woman, it's only one person who can love you. You see, and if you don't realize that, you begin to think that your husband is not worthy. And then before long, you have a divorce. And before long, you go to somebody else and you realize that I'm every woman. And then that person doesn't also work. Because the protocols of being a wife is not that you are strong to do everything. The, world, the, 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 the word of God describes you as you being like a merchant ship. You don't have to prove yourself that you're strong. Amen. You just have to be in your place of assignment. Amen. What is a place of assignment? Is to help your husband. How do you help your husband? He can't do, and this is the powerful thing I say all the time. The word of God describes, like I said in the beginning, the word of God has described you as a woman as a helper, and that same word he has used to describe himself, but you don't realize who you are. You don't realize who you are. So you think you're a second class citizen. But God has said that, look, in as much as I tell people to come, that I am their help, so I have told you that you are the help of that husband. Now, if you know that, and the husband perceives that with wisdom, the husband will not leave you. The husband will not go anywhere. The husband will recognize that without you, they are nothing. Amen. That's how powerful you are. Amen. I want you to prepare yourself as a woman, a wife. Prepare yourself as a wife to know that you're not just any ordinary person. God said, let us prepare the wife to be a helper, just like I'm a helper for my body. Let the wife be a helper to the husband. Do you know, I, I got to pause and make you think about it. God has called you to a place of power. A place of power. Woman, wife, God has called you to a place of power. 
Don't let any man take you for granted. Don't let any man make you feel inferior. God has called you to a place. Even a man cannot say that God has called him to be a helper. But a woman, God has confirmed it and even documented it in his word. Yes. Hallelujah. You are powerful. You are powerful. There are things that you will do and your husband will rejoice. He's sitting somewhere, minding his own business, doing whatever. But because you are in the marketplace, in a position of power, being a helper, People are recognizing your husband because of what you are doing. Yeah. Think about it. Because of what you've set in motion, because of the things that you are doing, because of the things that you are putting in place. See, you probably did not realize who you are. And thank God for Christ. Thank God for Jesus Christ. That we can call upon him and he gives us opportunities over and over and over again. So I'm not saying that perchance you might have been a wife and because things didn't work out, you know, you're going to fault yourself. Now that you know who you are as a wife, get yourself ready and let it be the best yet of you. Let it be the best yet of you. Let it be that, yes, Lord, I didn't know in the past. But now that you've opened my eyes to see who I am, now that you've opened my eyes to see what a wife is, I'm going to put myself in the place of assignment. Amen. And I'm going to ready myself so that when the person that is pursuing me sees me, the person will not just see me as a woman, but you see me as a wife. And your word says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Father, I put myself in a position where I would be a good thing. Amen. And I will be seen as a good thing. And I will operate as a wife. And the attributes of a wife. Father, your word calls me a virtuous woman. And your word says, who can find? Unless the person is able to perceive, the person will see who I am. Let me be exposed to that place where the person who is looking for me will begin to see me and know that, Lord, it takes that revelation to see me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It takes that revelation to know who I am. It takes that revelation to be exposed. And Lord, I am ready. So begin to look at a virtuous woman. It is not impossible to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God made a woman to be a man's helper in the word. Look at, look at Eve. It goes from Eve and Eve was a helper. Today, you know, the topic was so so important to me that I had notes from all over the place. I brought my notes where I can go back and forth. That's why I'm looking at the notes. I'm looking at everything. I'm like, Lord, let me not leave one thing out. Amen. Let me not leave one thing out. The, the Bible calls a woman to hold the, the husband in high esteem. How can you hold your husband in high esteem? How can you make sure that your husband is just like when you're looking or when you're praying, you hold God in high esteem, don't you? You hold God in the place of authority. And the word of God says, make sure that you hold that man in high esteem. Let him be your covering. Let him be your covering. People would always say, yes, the word of God says, let a, a, a wife should be subject to your husband. And when, when people say that, they say, oh, then it means that the husband is going to have too much power over me. No. No. 
it means that you would be obedient and you, you, your alliance with each other would be the same. You would know why you are there. You would know when you have to speak. Because remember, the husband is your covering. So let the husband do all the... Yeah. See, your husband is supposed to be your protector. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. See, but the world has made it where I am my own woman so I can shove, I can push, I can do this, I can speak my way through. But if you're a woman, if you're a wife, you prepare yourself for somebody to talk on your behalf. Amen. When you walk, that's why I, I, I don't see it as old fashioned when you have to open a door for a wife, when you have to give your wife water, when you have to serve your wife, when you have to love your wife to even say, oh darling, and go on your knees sometimes. People are like, why do you have to do all those things? Do you know how to cherish something? Do you know how to love somebody? If you don't know how to love somebody, go into the word, the constitution. I always call it the constitution. The law tells you how to love somebody. It shows you that you are, you, you, the husband, you're supposed to love your wife so much, so much, so much, so much that even when things are like, not uh, going the way you want it to go. When you love her, she will also melt like butter. Have you seen butter on butter on bread? <laughs> you know, you're, you're also, you also have to have this attitude. Don't go to sleep after you get through marriage. Don't go to sleep without talking about what you think is on your heart that you've not talked about. I had a rule in my, at my house. I still have that rule up to today. After being married for 22 years, by God's grace. Wow. Amen. I just had my 22nd anniversary, just uh, last, last two weeks, I believe it is. But we had a rule the moment we came together. We said we will never fight in the house because that is supposed to be our haven. So we would go out in the anger and the way we were upset. We would sit in one vehicle, not two vehicles, sit in one vehicle, drive to the park, got to the park and got out of the park and vented against each other and screamed and shouted. And people thought, oh, they are just walking. No, we were walking and we were venting and you said this and I said this and did this and that. And we would do it for hours, sometimes two hours. And by the time we were done, we were like, whew. And then we'll sit in the car and we're like, honey, what are we going to eat? <laughs> oh, yeah. By the time we got back home, yes, yes. the quarrel had left yeah. and our house was still the haven. Yeah. We didn't allow, yes. We didn't allow the enemy to have a hold in our house. We didn't. The only time we did things together is to lift our voice and pray in our house and believe and, 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 and together, you know, get into the place of prayer. But when it came to something that wasn't, you know, uh, 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 good or something that we need, needed to deal with, we went out of our heaven, out of the place, and made sure that there was peace and came back and said, yes, of a truth. We did it. So, you know, you have to set perimeters. Don't allow people to come into that relationship. God is the one that has to interfere in that relationship. So make sure that you call God you and your partner together call God and say, we don't know how to deal with this, but we know the person who can deal with it. So we are calling upon your name. Amen. Amen. The reason why we go to people is because we've not called on the God who can solve the problem. Wow. And he's our ever-present help. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is exciting when you get into the word of God and you use the principles 
the precepts, the concepts of what the Bible says you have to do. A lot of people will say, oh, I'm going to be wife material, but I have to have the man try me and see so that he will be satisfied. Who told you that that's what you have to do before the man becomes satisfied? The man, if you do that, the man will take advantage of you. And he will remember that for the rest of his life. When you are with him, he remembers that. So what, what good have you done to yourself? Rather, when you preserve yourself and you come together and you do everything together, it is amazing. Sometimes you might even laugh about the way it started and all that, and it might not have been whatever, but the fun of it, just laughing together about it, is awesome. And guess what? It gives you the opportunity to know your partner. A lot of people are so preserved and this and that because they don't want uh, flaws to be a, a, an issue, so they hide things and they do things. No. Once you have become somebody who the man has pursued and known, and together you come together and you, you do things God's way, anything that they see after that, we, it, it happens to a woman, it happens to a man, but everything after that is God's grace that covers. Amen? Amen. And you can work things and it's just beautiful. It is so beautiful that it will bring so much joy. Every time you see your partner, you'll be happy. But it's, it's important. I can't stress it enough. A wife will be pursued only because the wife is a wife, not just a woman. A wife will be pursued only because she's a wife. A husband will be recognized because of who he is under Christ. Do you see a God-fearing man? Do you see a man that in spite of everything will love you? Do you see that in a man? Do you see the man as your source? Like I was telling you, God is our source. And God has placed a man in your life to be your source. So rethink your mind. See, some people think that I need to get my career going before I marry. You get your career going and you get married and you realize that you're married to your career. Have you thought about that? I got to drink some water on this one. You realize that you're done and your career is excellent. But you'll be married to your career because you know your career so much that you don't know how to love a man. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll be away for so much and your husband will be like, why did I marry her? So think about those things. Think about those things. Um, and it's likewise the same to the, to the man as well. Unless you have prepared yourself and the word of God calls you that you are precious more than rubies and diamonds and all that. If you've not gotten to that stage where a man can pursue you and know that no matter what, no many, how many years they can still pursue you. And that's why it's important. You know, I, I keep hitting on women more than I'm hitting on men because women, you have an essential role to play. Sometimes women will do everything they have to do and once they get the man, they're like, oh, I'm so relaxed. Why would you do that when the, the word of God says that you're supposed to be precious more than rubies? You know, you saw them, and I was joking, but I was, it was a fact. When, you, when the man met you, you had all these things that embellishes. Am I using the right word? It embellishes you and makes you so good. And you met the man, so some people would wake up and then they, you know, they don't even want to do things that will make the man say, ooh, am I going too deep? 
I told you today, 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 today is going to be an interesting one, and uh, we've seen some interesting things that have happened. Hallelujah. Hmm. The word of God tells the man, but as for you, O man of God, flee these things, aim at and pursue righteousness, true goodness, moral conformity to the character of God. Man, I'm talking to you now. You have to be godly. The fear of God has to be your portion. Faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness have to be your characteristics. Let me leave you with that. Love your wives. Love your wives. Make sure you're a man of God in good standing with God. Make sure you can understand your wife with gentleness and tact. Make sure that your intellect is so sharp that you don't offend your wife even with what comes out of your mouth. Make sure that you cherish your wife. Make sure that you honor your wife. Make sure that you respect your wife. There are some people, they get married and, and they take things for granted to the point where even when a friend, a friend happens to be a woman, comes to them and say, hey, how are you doing? And they want to give the, the woman, the other woman wants to give you a, a, a kiss or a peg or whatever or a hug and your wife is there. Make sure you hold your wife before you give that hug. Show respect to the woman next to you. You know, don't just let things go and make the woman feel that she's not that special person in your life. It is very, very important. And again, let me remind you, if you don't treat a woman right, the word of God says even your prayers can be hindered or it can be ineffective just for the fact that a woman is grieving. Just that the heart is hurting because you did something or you said something. God is not going to answer you if you've not taken care of that situation. So that is why I told you, when, when there's a, an issue, I would go out, we would go out and we would vent. And we never slept without talking to each other. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. The last thing you want to do is, whoa, I missed the opportunity to say, I'm sorry. And you open your eyes and perchance your partner is not there. How are you going to feel? That's how you have to take one another. Very, very important. Well, I pray that this has been a blessing. Amen. Amen. I pray that it has been a blessing. I would have... Uh, the opportunity, if we can, to probably do a part two. I, I had an exciting time today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that's all for today. That's all for today for learning with the Apostle. I'm always excited because when I do it, I also learn. There are things that you think you know, things that you think uh, you are, you are perfect on, but once in a while you always have to go back to the Constitution to make sure that there are things that, you know, the things that you didn't see because, you know, the message of God, the Word of God says are new every morning. He teaches you something every day that you can apply to yourself, apply to your family, apply to your marriage. This time we were talking about marriages and uh, how we can get ready to get to that place. Pretty soon we'll talk about marriages when you've settled in and uh, surprising things come about and how to navigate, how to deal with the surprises. We'll also talk about this. But I am so excited that we had this opportunity to talk. And as usual, I would love for you to uh, bring in your questions, ask, ask things about, uh, you know, what we, we just uh, talked about, you know. But thank you so much for being here, uh, live audience, uh, everybody online, everybody that uh, joined in. Uh, continue to bring your prayer requests. Uh, 
so that we would pray. I'm excited. I'm going to pray today with people who have uh, requests. I am going to pray, and um, we're going to have a good time. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hey, welcome back. This is the time where we do the prayer with the Apostle. I'm so excited. Uh, our God answers prayer. Amen. Yes, Amen. So I'm excited to pray with you. Praise God. And we have a couple of uh, prayer points that we need to uh, touch on. Um, Amen. Hey, Apostle. I want to get healed from thyroid nodules. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, I want you to know that um, it's your inheritance. It says, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we were healed. So I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever the thyroid issue is, that it be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. I lift you up from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. And I cancel any form of sickness, disease, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the Lord, for healing for my physical eyes and spiritual eyes. Amen. Amen. It's a good thing that you ask your purpose in the Lord. One thing that Lord, the, the Lord God has uh, called us to do which is our purpose, is to make sure that we uplift kingdom up. We have been called as a mandate to ensure that his kingdom will be fulfilled on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Amen. Amen. So knowing that, what are the things that you do? You make sure that when you lift your voice every morning, you pray concerning his church. You pray concerning the children of God. You pray concerning the servants that you are under, lifting them before the throne of grace, praying that his word will be fulfilled. Once you've done that, he says, then, then come. If you look at um, uh, the, the model of prayer, he says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Remember, he's telling you how to pray. And he says, pray that the kingdom of God will come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What has, whatever has been proclaimed in heaven, let it be done on earth. And then he says after that, that you can then pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. So then after you've done all that, give me my healing for my physical eyes and my spiritual eyes. You have done what he has called you to do. And there's no way that when you pray concerning what your needs are, he won't answer it. So with that, that you've now received, knowing who you are in Christ and what your mandate is on earth, and pursuing that mandate and doing that job, then whatever you ask him, he would give it to you. So receive the healing physically. Receive the spiritual ears and eyes as well. Because the last time I checked, he said in his word that you would ask, you would pray, and he would answer you, and he would show you great and mighty things. He says he would even show you things that you don't even know about. In other words, you open that spiritual eyes that you want to be opened. And you will begin to see the things that God wants you to see. So receive that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Mm. For my daughter and I to be blessed with a home of our own soon and increase in our finances. Praise God. I'm going to lift you and your daughter up. And just like I said for the, first, uh, the, the last prayer point. That one of the things when you begin to ask the Lord for things, you have to also make sure that your, the posture where you stand, how you stand, is very, very important. While you are asking God for things on your own, you also have to make sure that you pray concerning why you are here on earth. I would always remind you of the scripture, Psalm 115 and verse 16. He says that he has given you the earth. His, the, the heavens are for him, but he has given you the earth so that you can come 
and demonstrate. There are people, when you read um, uh, the 16th verse, it says that if you don't do what you're supposed to do, there are people, I think it's the 17th verse, people are going to die. See, people don't read that. But it says people are going to die because you've not done what you're supposed to do. And God doesn't want anybody to die, but everybody to be saved, to yes. come into the kingdom of God. Yes. But it takes you and I to do that. So when you take care of his business, that home is easy. That increase in finances are easy. Make sure you plug in and take care of his business. That's why he called us to be on this earth. And so that when you do that, everything around you will be successful. So I lift you up with that knowledge. I lift you up and I pray that as you do what God has called you to do in his kingdom, that whatever finances you need, whatever home that you are asking the Lord for, because remember the home, the finances and everything, they will bring glory to his name. So there is no way that he will fail you. But you have to put yourself in the position where what you need to do is done and what he needs to do for you is also done. So God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sending in all your prayer requests. Please remember to email your request to Plugged in at revelationchurchla.org. I'm going to say it again. It's plugged in at revelationchurchla.org. Remember to always plug in. What do I mean? Make sure that you are plugged into the Lord. Amen. Make sure that you connect with me so that we have a good time. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs>
question reads, I do not have a spiritual father like you or Prophet Lovi in my nation. What do I have to do? That's a good question. Uh, number one, um, <laughs> you, need, you need to have a very good relationship with our father. A very good relationship wow. with our father. Because all of us are following our father. Amen. 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 And then we begin to serve under our spiritual father. Yes. So there are a couple of things you do. Know who you are in him. Begin to follow after him. And then all these other things, you, 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 would, you would get into a place, you see, Having a, a spiritual father, the Lord leads you to your spiritual father. Yes. You don't just go. He leads you. And again, like I said, you need to be on assignment. See, people just think that you can call somebody your spiritual father. When you're not on assignment, how would you know who your spiritual father is? So you need to be on assignment. And when you're on assignment, he will lead you to where your spiritual father is. We all had to go through it. Okay? I am under Pastor, uh, I mean, Prophet Lovi, because God had it that way. So I came under him. Okay? And so a lot of things happen to you. Before you, you can say that, yes, I know that this is my spiritual covering, you have to deal with yourself. There are a lot of things that you need to prune off you. So it's a process. There are a lot of things that you need to get together. So the first thing you do is make sure that the Lord takes care of those things in your life. And then he puts you under somebody where you... The, the, the interesting thing or important thing is you, you should have a, a heart to serve. You know, it's not just about, well, who is my spiritual father? No. You should have a heart to serve and serve and serve. And you would, you would realize that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank you so much for your uh, questions. Keep them coming and make sure you email them to uh, plugged in at revelationchurch.org. Amen. 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 Uh, I had a very, very, very great time today. Uh, again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be in your space and in your time. I don't take it for granted. I love you so much. Make sure that you like, make sure that you subscribe, make sure that you share with a friend. Make sure when you subscribe, it, it gives us the opportunity. Whenever we come online, you would get a prompt and, and then you would know that we are online. So make sure that you subscribe. I love you so much. And remember to always stay plugged in. Amen. Because when you're plugged in, the light shines. Praise God. Amen. So I'm so excited. I also would like to encourage you. If you would like to sow into this work, God is doing so many great things in this house. People, people have connected with us. They've uh, sown on solid ground and on wonderful ground. And God has done so many things. The testimonies are breaking forth, you know. I have testimonies one of these days. I will share the testimonies. I will uh, show you some of the testimonies that God is doing, even in these segments, even in, uh, in our house. We've seen testimonies all over the place. This is a house of solutions. Amen. Amen. People have plugged in. People have uh, sown their seed to uh, increase the work that we are doing. We are going all over the world. We are going to various places. Uh, we just came back from Houston. The other day we were in uh, Miami. Uh, we've been to Dallas. We are believing God to even go further, further to different places. We are excited. People are making sure that they are with us when we go. And if you go on YouTube, you see all the good things that are happening in the house. We give uh, glory to God for our Papa in the house, Prophet Lovi. 
And as you see what God is using him to do, we want to connect with you. We want to connect with you. So please go on Revelation Church, la.org forward slash give and make sure that you connect with us. And I want to also tell you that we have our QR code now when you go online, when you go to Revelation Church, LA, you can connect and click on the code, the QR code so that we can connect with you. We want to reach out to you as well. In as much as you connect with us, we want to show our love too. So please do that and we love you so much. God richly bless you so you can give and God bless you. I'll see you in the next segment. Hallelujah. Yeah.